In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this image of a chain. To position the links of the chain, I'll be using Blender's rigid body tools to do a simulation of the chain falling. The first thing that you need to do before starting this project is to make sure that you're using Blender version 2.66 or newer. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.68a. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. Now delete the cube by pressing X. To make a single link for the chain, we're going to start with the shape of a torus. So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Torus. I'll zoom in on this a little. Now let's make this a little thicker. So come over here and find the value for minor radius and set it to 0.35. Now change the number of major segments from 48 to 46. You'll see why I'm doing this a little later. Also change the number of minor segments to 24 to give the torus better resolution. Now press the Smooth button. Next, let's rotate the torus along the x-axis. So press R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now press Tab to go into Edit Mode so that we can stretch out the torus. Then press Z for wireframe. Then switch to Orthographic View by pressing 5 on the number pad and switch to front view by pressing 1 on the number pad. Next, deselect everything by pressing the A key. Now press B and draw a selection box around all of the vertices on the right side. You may have noticed that it was easy to position the selection box between the left and right side vertices because there are no vertices directly in the center of the torus. That's because we previously changed the major segments of the torus from 48 to 46. If we had left the value at 48, then there would have been vertices directly in the center. Now let's move the selected vertices to the right along the x-axis. So press G, then X, then 1.5, then Enter. Some chains are welded in the middle, so let's add that. So press Ctrl-R to make a loop cut, then move the cursor here so that the loop cut will be made at the top center. Then press 4 to make 4 loop cuts, and then press the Enter key two times. Now let's scale the selection along the x-axis. So press S, then X, then 0.5, then Enter. Now press A to deselect everything, then press B and draw a selection box around these center vertices. Then scale it by pressing S, then 1.1, then Enter. Then scale it along the x-axis by pressing S, and then X, and then 1.7, then Enter. Now press Tab to switch back to Object Mode, and press Z for Solid View. We're finished making the shape of the chain link, so now let's add a material. So click on the Material button, and then click New. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. For the surface type, select Anisotropic. This is similar to Glossy, except that it will look darker around the edges. Now I'm going to add a texture to the surface using a displacement. So click the Displacement button and select Image Texture. Now click the Open button to select the image. I'm going to use this picture that I took of the ground. It may seem a little strange to use a picture of the ground for a chain texture, but it actually works pretty well. Since I'm going to be using it as a displacement, none of the colors will be present in the chain. You can find a link to this image in the video description. The image is named ground.jpg. After selecting the image, click the Open Image button. Now we need to unwrap the chain link object. To do this, I'll first switch to Compositing Screen Layout. Now come down here and click on this little button and select the image that we previously loaded. I'll zoom out until I can see the whole image. Now move the cursor into this window and press Tab to switch to Edit Mode. Press A once or twice until all the vertices are selected in the chain link. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view and 5 on the number pad for orthographic view. Then to unwrap the object, press U, 
then select Project from View Bounds. We're done with edit mode, so I'll press the Tab key to switch back to object mode. Now I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see what's happening better, and I'll also zoom in. Now come up to the node editor and click on this round button to select shader nodes, and also make sure that this button that looks like a cube is selected. I'll rearrange these so that they're not on top of each other. This node represents the image that we loaded. You'll notice that the alpha output is used for the displacement input. We need to change this to use the color output. So remove this connection and then add a connection from the color output to the displacement input. Now if you look at our rendered view, you can see that we have the texture now, but the texture is way too strong. So we can reduce the strength of the texture by using a multiplication node. So from the Add menu, select Converter, then Math. Move this over the line that connects the color output to the displacement input. When the line turns orange, it's in the correct position. Now click this button and select Multiply. Now we can control the strength of the texture by using this value here. For now, set this value to zero so that no texture is applied, and we'll come back to this later after we have better lighting set up. When we're ready to adjust this value, we can set it here or in the Material panel. If you click on the Material button, you can see down here in the Displacement section that we now have a Multiply button and a value that we can change. This was added when we added this math node. So now this value and this value will both do the same thing. Now I'll switch back to Default Screen Layout. We're ready to start making duplicates of this chain link, so I'll zoom out and reposition the view. Now press Shift-D to duplicate the chain link and place it to the right. Then rotate it along the x-axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now hold down the Shift key and right-click on this chain link to add it to the selection. Then press Shift-D to duplicate and place it to the right. Then press Shift-D again and place it to the right. Then press Shift-D again and place it to the right. I need to zoom out some more. Now I'll use Lasso Select to select all of the chain links. I do this by holding down the Control key, and then I use the left mouse button to draw a line around the chain links. Now press Shift-D to duplicate, and place the chain links to the right. Then duplicate this one more time. Now we should have 24 chain links. Next, select all of the chain links. Then rotate the chain by pressing R, then minus 65, then Enter. Then press G and move the chain so that the bottom link is just a little bit above the center. I'll also move it to the left. Now we're going to use the Rigid Body tools to help position the chain. This will allow us to simulate a falling chain. To set this up, come over here and open up the Rigid Body Tools section. Now click on the Add Active button. This will make the chain links movable objects that will be affected by gravity during the simulation. Now click on the Chain Shape button and select Mesh. Now we need a surface for the chain to fall on, so press Shift-A and select Mesh and then Plane. Let's scale this up, so press S, then 50, then Enter. Now click the New button to set the material for the plane. I'm going to keep all of the default values. Now under the Rigid Body Tools, click the Add Passive button. This will make the plane part of the simulation, but it will not move. Now we're ready to run the simulation. I'll zoom in for this, and I'll also rotate the view so that we can see this better. To start the simulation, click the Play button.
When the chain has finished falling, click the pause button. If there's something that you don't like, then you can just click this button to go back to frame one. Then make any changes that you want to. Then click play again. Now let's set up the lighting. So press 7 on the number pad for top view. Select the lamp and press G to drag it over to the left side of the chain. Then click on the object data button if it's not already selected and make sure that the point lamp is selected. Change the size to 5. Then click the use nodes button and set the strength to 10,000. Now press Shift D to duplicate the lamp and drag the copy to the center of the chain. Then duplicate it again and drag it to the right side of the chain. Now press zero on the number pad to switch to camera view. I'll zoom in a little. When I'm in camera view, I like to lock the camera to view. To do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate the view while looking through the camera. So I'll position this to the view that I want to render. To get a better view of what we have so far, switch to Rendered View. Now let's add an environment texture to the background to give the shiny chain something more interesting to reflect than this gray background that we currently have. So click on the World button. Then click Use Nodes. Then click this little button next to the gray color and select Environment Texture. To select an image, click the Open button and navigate to the image that you want to use. I'm going to use this image and you can find a link to it in the video description. The image is named outdoors.jpg. You can see that the reflections from the chain look much better now. Now let's add the texture to the chain that we previously set up. So right click on one of the chain links to select it, then click on the material button and go down to the displacement section. This is the value that we need to change. I'm going to use a value of 0 0.05. If you would like the texture to be stronger, just increase this value. Now let's add a wooden texture to the flat plane. So right click on it to select it. Then press this little button next to the color button and select image texture. Now press the open button to select the image. I'll be using this picture. It's named surface.jpg. So select the image and click Open Image. Now let's unwrap the plane. I'm going to switch to the compositing screen layout for this. Now click on this button and select the image that was just loaded. Then move the cursor into this window and press 7 on the number pad to switch to top view. Then press Tab to enter edit mode and Z for wireframe. Then zoom out and press A once or twice until the whole plane is selected. Then to unwrap the object, press U, then select Project from View Bounds. To see what this looks like, I'll press 0 on the number pad to switch to Camera View, and I'll also switch to Material View. I can improve the resolution of the wood image by scaling the selection in the left window. Let's scale it up by 2, so press S, then 2, then Enter. You can also reposition it by pressing G. Then move it until the view on the right looks good. Then to add some depth to the texture, come up to the node editor and make a connection from the color output of the image to the displacement input. Now we can switch back to the default screen layout. Well, everything looks good, and so now I'm ready to render the final image, but I'm going to save the project first. 
I like to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. So from the file menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name this chain.blend. Now let's render the image, so click on the Render button. Then open the Sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 500. I'm also going to set the clamp value to 0.98. You may have noticed that a rendered image sometimes has bright pixels that show up in places where they shouldn't. Setting the clamp value can help prevent this. Now let's render the final image. So come back up here and click on the Render button. This image is going to take a while to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished, and this is the final image. To save the image, press the F3 key. I'm going to name this image chain.png. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.